With the fall of the Berlin Wall and the reunification of Germany, Western countries ended up having access to a series of Soviet technologies, such as the R-73 short-range air-to-air missiles that equipped the MiG-29 fighters of the former East Germany. With this, the West discovered something that was quite uncomfortable. The R-73 missiles represented the fourth generation of short-range missiles, more advanced of the time, and easily surpassed any Western short-range missile. The R-73 was more maneuverable, more resistant to countermeasures, had a greater angle of engagement and, if used in conjunction with a helmet sight, could give even inexperienced pilots an advantage over the best NATO pilots, who had the previous generation missiles. This started a race between the main Western nations in the development of new missiles for close air combat, and one of the main programs originating from this initiative was the IRIS-T, the missile jointly developed by several European nations, such as Germany, Sweden and Italy. The IRIS-T completed its development in the early 2000s and officially entered service in 2005, which gave its users the ability to efficiently engage Russian fighters in possible short-range combat. The IRIS-T has an infrared sensor with imaging capabilities. The main difference between a traditional infrared sensor, which equips previous generation missiles, with an infrared sensor capable of forming images, such as the one equipped with the IRIS-T, is that a traditional sensor only detects a heat blur represented by the target's thermal signature, while a sensor capable of forming images sees the target as if it were a camera, with all its shapes and details. This makes the IRIS-T capable of distinguishing the real aircraft from possible countermeasures, making it much more difficult to outwit. This modern infrared system also greatly increases the possible angles of engagement compared to previous generation missiles. First-generation missiles could only engage planes directly from behind, where they had a near-perfect view of enemy aircraft's engine nozzles, and since they were positioned at a maximum of 30 degrees in relation to the nose of the launching aircraft. This means that any sudden maneuver would break the missile's lock. The second-generation missiles continued to be able to attack only from behind enemy planes, but they were already able to lock onto targets that had their engine nozzles positioned at up to 45 degrees in relation to the nose of the launching fighter, which slightly reduced the chance of any maneuver capable of breaking the missile's blockade. The third-generation missiles incorporated the ability to engage targets from any aspect, whether from the front, side, or rear, and expanded the engagement angle to up to 30 degrees in relation to the nose of the launching fighter. The fourth-generation missiles expanded this capability even further, allowing enemy aircraft to be engaged in all aspects within an angle of almost 90 degrees in relation to the nose of the launching fighter, and began to be integrated with helmet sights, so that was not as more necessary to point the launch plane's nose at the target. Fifth-generation missiles can attack targets in practically any direction, including behind the launching aircraft if used in conjunction with a data link or radar warning system, that is, as strange as it may seem, a fighter armed with missiles IRIS-T will have the ability to fire backwards in close-range combat. This is also due to the great maneuverability that these missiles have. The IRIS-T has a vectored thrust system that allows overloads of up to 60 GS, which is much greater than any current fighter and much higher than what a human being could withstand. The IRIS-T can work in two modes, locking before launch or locking after launch. In pre-launch locking, the missile is already locked on the target before leaving the track. In locking after launch, the missile is launched while not still seeing the target, receives coordinates from a radar, radar warning system or data link to head towards the target, and then locks automatically when it finds it. This is the mode that allows it to be thrown backwards, for example. This combination of a very advanced infrared guidance system, the use of data link and great maneuverability allows the IRIS-T to even be an anti-missile missile. That's right, it can be used against missiles that have been fired at the fighter that carries it, provided of course that these missiles are detected on approach. The maximum range of the IRIS-T is approximately 25 kilometers, which is more than enough range for short-range combat, which is its main mission. 
It weighs 87 kilograms and is about 2.9 meters long, and its maximum speed can exceed Mach 3. It's faster and more agile than any fighter jet and, what's more, it has a passive sensor, which means it doesn't emit any signal capable of alerting the target, making it almost impossible to deceive. In practice, this means that if you enter the Iris T's range, you can already consider yourself dead. The Iris T has such fantastic capabilities that it ended up being transformed into an anti aircraft system. From there came the Iris T SLS, which uses the standard missile from a land based launcher. Each launcher carries four missiles that are fired vertically and can hit targets in 360 degrees up to 12 kilometers away and 8,000 meters high. There is also the Iris T SLM, which is the mid range version. This version takes advantage of almost everything from the standard Iris T, but has a larger engine and receives an aerodynamic protector for the infrared sensor, which is released when the missile approaches the target. The Iris T SLM can intercept targets in 360 degrees up to 40 kilometers away and 20,000 meters in altitude, and each launcher can carry up to eight missiles. The SLX version is under development which increases the range to 80 kilometers and incorporates new technologies, as well as a submarine-launched version, whose purpose will be to protect these vessels from helicopters and maritime patrol planes. The Iris-T is currently in use in Ukraine in its SLS and SLM versions, with a target hit rate of over 90% against Russian drones and missiles. Today it is considered one of the most efficient systems in protecting the skies over Ukraine. It is, therefore, a fantastic system that goes beyond theory and demonstrates its full potential on the field. Thank you for watching the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and see you next time.